that come to you like an atomic clock each and every day. The clock, atomic clock. That come to you like an atomic clock each and every day. I have to find where is the atomic clock? Where is the atomic clock? Where is my atomic clock? Wait, I got this coin. Why do you need to say so? <laughs> So Ivan, what I've been most impressed about is your consistency. How do you how do you manage to make one hour content <laughs> <laughs> every day, seven days a week, like an atomic uh, no. clock? <laughs> exactly. 365 days a year almost for three years straight, is it? Yeah, yeah, almost. How well, it's it's fun, it's like being with friends, you know, I have the chat, I have the live, everyone is watching, so it's um, it's not just that, you know, you have to record and then you edit, I never edit, I just upload uh, whatever I have recorded during the live stream, so it's, it's fun, it's very fun, but at the same time, of course, you know, some days you're more tired than other days, but you just, I, ha I just have this one thing every day that I need to do, it's in the beginning of the day, so there's no excuse to not do it, and whenever I feel a bit tired, it's, it's, it's no excuse. And um, I think people have one, maybe two things they can do consistently every day, because then it becomes a bit too much in terms of your discipline, and you know, the mind cannot handle too much discipline. You have only limited discipline per day. So I've chosen that this stream thing is my discipline and uh, nothing else. Nothing else that is truly, truly important each and every day. And the brain is capable of having one, one thing every day. <laughs> I finish at uh, nine, approximately. Mm. When do you so, start? So I, uh, when do you go up? I, 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 uh, <laughs> so it's at 8 a.m. I, I am live. Uh, normally it is 8.30. I go up approximately six, six, yeah. seven. It, it actually differs. I had one period where I woke up five and I had a lot of time. Then lately I go up at six, seven, because then I, ma I manage still to prepare and to, to do it. So it differs, it differs. But it's almost world unique to do one hour of <laughs> complex yeah, content yeah, yeah. every day, seven days a week, yeah, yeah, 365 yeah. days, three years it is unique. straight. It is unique, yes. But it's fun. That's you the make it sound most... easy, but that is not easy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy, but it's... Uh, it's my lifestyle, you know. It's part of, of, of my lifestyle, and also you become better at it each and every each and every day. But uh, for the first, if you watch my old streams, it wasn't like it is now. Yeah. It was way more stale, and it was only 20 minutes, and then it just became longer, longer, and longer. And now it's approximately one hour. Yeah. What's your family and friends saying? Are they sold on Bitcoin? Well, mostly yes, mostly yes. My grandma, I think, still has a few reservations. Uh, she thinks it's some kind of pyramid. <laughs> but I've explained to her, so when I explained to her, she seems to understand, but then next year, somehow, around the Christmas table, she once again <laughs> goes towards the pyramid <laughs> pyramid uh, uh, arguments, but yeah, I think she understands. But yeah, everyone is super supportive, and people now see that Bitcoin is for real. You see financial media discussing Bitcoin, uh, billionaires coming into Bitcoin, public companies coming into Bitcoin. And what's important is that we also have blockchain because many people, they don't want to be in Bitcoin, but they feel that blockchain is important. Mm. I felt the PayPal moment was a big. You cannot, argue, <laughs> you cannot argue with that, it's <laughs> PayPal. It doesn't matter what you think, whether you work in some kind of financial institution, PayPal think it's important. So you cannot really argue with that. The same yeah. with JP Morgan now as well. So the more banks really start working and being active in the crypto, the more uh, it will be convincing for everyone in the space. Mm. Yeah. What made you dedicate basically your life to educating about this? Well, because I felt that this is a very important niche that is not filled. And uh, when we started in 2017 to do the courses and the academy, we had so much good feedback. And when you get a lot of good feedback, you continue. So we continued, we felt appreciated and it grew and grew and grew and it only makes sense to continue. So it was both that. 
it was something that I really felt passionate about and Philip who I work with and it was a combination of finance and technology which is fantastic it's both two industries that both rule the world the most important two industries in the world and also our interests so my interest and Philip's interest are exactly the same this is finance and it's technology and crypto is the merging of those mm. two which is fantastic and of course, the feedback from the community and the fact that people joined and we added more courses. In 2019, we did courses each and every month. And 2020, we do several courses per month. So we're just ramping it up. And now we have more instructors. So it's not only us. So mm. we're just growing as much as possible. Ah, that's fantastic. Okay, what is your most important learning so far? Well, so far it is uh, maybe the thing we started with, consistency. That things don't happen overnight. It takes a lot of time. And normally it is a snowball effect that you don't even notice. Mm. And you never really expect how fast it will go and how big it will become in the future. Because today it may seem slow, whatever project it is that you're working on or idea. It's slow in the beginning, but then it's exponential. It's like a snowball effect. Just like Bitcoin during the bull market is the last few days that, <laughs> that are the, the biggest gains. So the same thing with any project or any, yeah. Yeah, any business idea. Do you think it will be Bitcoin or Ethereum that will kind of... I think, rule this space, or will it be both? I think it is both. Bitcoin is Bitcoin, it's 21 million, it's digital gold. ETH is ETH, it's a whole platform of DeFi and the fi financial uh, applications and instruments. They are not uh, mutually exclusive. Um, mm. I think Bitcoin is irreplaceable. And at the same time, Bitcoin is not ETH. You cannot do DEX on Bitcoin. You cannot do lending. You cannot do anything on Bitcoin except maybe hodling, and mm. <laughs> that's it. But that in itself is very important because it's 21 million, it's never changing. and uh, like I told on my YouTube channel a few days ago, it's also good because when, for example, Michael Saylor puts 400 million into Bitcoin, he doesn't want to be reading, I don't think that at least he wants to be reading, you know, daily updates. Okay, what is the new software update for Bitcoin? Mm. Bitcoin is Bitcoin, 21 million. It is known across the globe. You go to Africa, you go to Indonesia, Asia, Latin America, they know what Bitcoin is. They, it's uh, widely accepted. So that's, that's the point with Bitcoin. And then ETH is this whole, this whole jungle of trading, lending, derivatives, uh, all kinds of financial instruments will be on ETH and you will have to use it because otherwise your institution cannot compete. You're not in the open market. It's like trying to build your own version of the internet today if you're a tech company. It doesn't make sense. The same thing is with DeFi. If you're a bank, financial institution, you will have to use DeFi, the open financial markets because that's where most liquidity is, most participants are, those are the most efficient markets. So I think it will be the base layer of all finance in the future. What about all the uh, altcoins? A lot of people feel that it's just scams to take people's Bitcoin, basically. <laughs> well, Do you feel it, it's like that or are there real innovations? Well, I've, I've been in altcoins for, for uh, quite some time and especially, you know, looking at the performance in uh, 2020, it's been very good. Even if you did not uh, sell at the peak of DeFi, which I did not, it's still up significantly, mm. significantly. So keeping that in mind, you now when people say it's the only thing altcoins are doing is take <laughs> money from, uh, from people in terms of Bitcoin, it's not true, absolutely not true. Then most of them will still fail, that's the thing. It's like startup projects, different ideas are getting tested. And the thing with crypto is that each idea, on day one you can start speculating. Mm. and people can start getting emotional and FOMO in and this and that, so you have to be careful. But some of these ideas will be big. And that's the same with ETH, it was also an ICO just project that launched. So most of them will fail, some of them already are quite big. You look at, for example, Aave, you look at Kyber, all of these money markets. Many of them also started as ICOs, new projects. So I think altcoins are very important and many of them play a huge role already on top of ETH and some of them are trying to create their own ecosystems. So yeah, there are a lot of opportunities, but also many scams. So yeah, <laughs> you have to be careful. <laughs> Beware of the scams. <laughs> exactly. I have another question. How do you deal with criticism? In the election, people feel that <laughs> arguments are very tough, but here people feel that their entire financial future yes. will depend on if they win this Twitter argument or not. You start feeling everyone else is a scammer that doesn't support your coin or your camp and so on. And yeah. Criticism can get very fierce. How do you deal with that? Well, it's part of the journey. It's absolutely part of the journey. Everyone in crypto that has done anything is a scammer, according mm. to someone. You look at 
Even Andreas Antonopoulos, people call him a scammer because yes. he likes ETH. He's written a book about ETH. People mm -hmm. call Vitalik a scammer. People call Bitcoin Core developers scammers because yes. they have captured Bitcoin and the BSV and BCH is the only real Bitcoin. People call uh, Roger Ver a scammer. Uh, Craig Wright, the same thing. I mean, <laughs> who is not a scammer? <laughs> yeah. So it's just natural and especially on Twitter, there's a small group um, uh, of, uh, of users that, you know, they're there to debate. But uh, if you choose to engage, Really, it's your fault. I never engage in any, you know, such as, you know, heated debate. I, it's not why I'm there. You know, it's, it's not something that will benefit uh, my journey. It will not benefit the journey of my followers. So I never really engage in any debates. If, if somebody wants to debate, I, I rarely actually, you know, I don't have time even. Mm -hmm. My, my uh, focus is uh, YouTube, number one. That's where the community is. Uh, Twitter, number two. Huge community there as well. Amazing community. And then if somebody really wants to, you know, debate and they are and you can uh, very very quickly see do they really want to debate or they just want some fighting yeah <laughs> online fighting they're bored mm -hmm. they're in quarantine they cannot go out so they go to twitter they try to pick fights so normally i just ignore if somebody is all the time you know trying to pick you have the wonderful block button and the problem disappears it's amazing mm. so i think everyone who is you know has some kind of following you i mean for your own mental health you have to use the mute and, and the block if somebody is really there, <laughs> there all the time i mean it's it's it doesn't benefit anyone and the the most important thing is to focus on the bigger bigger picture mm. one last question i try to approach this more from a market perspective what do you think are the biggest opportunities what's the type of opportunities is it like bitcoin holding or <laughs> yeah, defi yeah. or i think it other? depends on different people for some people just bitcoin is super super high risk and they uh, they just discover crypto they feel that bitcoin is wild wild west so for them just bitcoin is enough for new people if you are more comfortable with Bitcoin, you think that this is going to be big. So Bitcoin really starts feeling low risk to you. Mm. Then you go into alts. So I, I think opportunities are everywhere. Holding Bitcoin in itself, huge opportunity. Maybe that's kind of like buying index funds. You know, if crypto succeeds, this thing will succeed. Mm. If you are and you have the lowest risk comparison to everything else, you want to be a bit more risky, you can go into ETH, into smaller coins. Uh, but there the risk increases dramatically, but also the returns as well. Uh, so I think it depends on the person and the risk tolerance. So Bitcoin is like index fund. And sometimes just Bitcoin performs extremely well. There are certain periods in time, like the past few weeks where mm. Bitcoin is dominating everything. So there's nothing wrong with just having Bitcoin. It's, it's, it's amazing as it is. Uh, but also when you look at the past performance of alts, especially during bull market, there is there is no doubt that alts completely outperform Bitcoin. I mean, it's it's not even a comparison. Look at XRP in 2017, it's 400x, I think, something like that. Look at IOTA, the same thing. But there is more of a play, how long do you stay in those positions? It's not really as long term as Bitcoin, because also many of these coins, they don't, uh, they have fallen completely. But just understanding the psychology and how people act in bull markets, you quickly see that alts will perform extremely well. Uh, but they, you don't want to be there too long <laughs> in, in, in most of them. I yeah. uh, thank you very much. Thank, thank you very you. much. Yeah, your clock is over there. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs>